thank you for that. Uh, so in this dream, although it's a bit darker, it's about something in the dreamer's life where they have the opportunity to leave something behind that, that they were quite familiar with, quite fond of, maybe they quite loved doing, but step into something that they will love even more uh, and get even more satisfaction and joy from. So it's about making the commitment to let go of things that no longer serve you in any way. So interesting. I, we have uh, some people joining us on Facebook as well. They're watching. If I can give them a sh few shout outs, is that OK? Absolutely. OK, yeah. so Roisin McKinley, she says hi. Hi, right back. <laughs> also, Eugene Donaghy is listening live from Toronto in Canada. Hello. Hi, I boot you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Was that your attempt at yes. a, a Canadian? Attempt I'd, like seven. To, I'd like to apologise. <laughs> on uh, behalf of the BBC and everyone else for that attempt. Um, Ian, you're going to stay with us for a little bit longer. We do have some more um, dreams in it. We'll do one more before we, we take a break with a song. Do you want to read the next one? Okay, so a short and sweet one. Uh, this actually happened to me twice in real life in the last month. Feeling that a bird has pooed on your head. A seagull both times in my uh, case. Not sure in the dream. Does it suggest pressure or perhaps I feel under attack? It can feel under attack, but what it does mean is that when you dream about your head, and particularly your hair, not in my case, obviously, but when you dream about your hair, it's about all the ideas that come out of your head. So it suggests that you are maybe a bit annoyed that someone is quite literally poo-pooing your ideas, <laughs> even though those <laughs> ideas have a lot of value. That's so interesting. I always wonder how, how you figure out that in the first place. So how have you correlated a bird poo-pooing on your head to your ideas being poo-pooed? Well, ask Ian. Well, how do you? How did you work that out? Yeah, well, I have been doing this for a while, and I've been doing it for about 45 years. Yeah. And in that time, I've analysed close to half a million dreams. There so I'm go. starting to get the hang of it now. Good lad. That's, a, that's, that's called a, a mic drop answer, yeah. Ian. Thank you. You're listening to Vinny and Kate tonight with Vinny and Anne-Marie. And this is the Dream Team portion of the show. And we are joined once again by dream psychologist Ian Wallace. Hello. Hi, hello again. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> Uh, another dream for you. Um, this one is about starting a new job. This person says, I dream that I'm starting a new job and I'm nervous and anxious about it in my dream. I'm not sure what the job is in the dream, but I'm always glad when I wake up. Anytime we, we dream about our work or our job, it's never really about the job or our work. It's all about what we feel our purpose is. And that can sound quite granular, what's my purpose in life? Why am I here and why am I doing this? But it suggests that this person has the opportunity to step into something new, to find something really purposeful that they want to follow. Now, it might be some career, but it's often something that they're really interested in, something that they're wanting to find out more about, they want to learn more about. And the anxiety comes from feeling that, oh, I'm not good enough to do that. I won't be able to do that. That's beyond me. But anytime you feel anxious or uncertain, it, it can be a bit scary, but it's always a very good sign because it shows that some opportunity is opening up for you. And the way to develop and the way to grow personally is always to step into uncertainty. So this dream is about stepping into uncertainty and doing that really purposefully. There's a question here. It's not about a specific dream, but it says, does your sleep pattern impact your dreams? For example, I have been doing night shifts for almost a year now. Yeah, it really, really does. So we said earlier on that we, on average, people sleep for seven and a half, eight hours per night and we have five sleep cycles. But there's a whole lot of research done around people who are shift workers who tend to have quite poor quality sleep or broken sleep. And also because of the way that the, the body works and how it wakes up, the humans uh, have become accustomed to working during the day. So if you work at night and then try and sleep during the day, and it's particularly at this time of year, unless you've got very, very heavy curtains, then you're trying to sleep in a light environment. And because you're sleeping in that illuminated environment, it means you wake up more. And because you're waking up more, your sleep patterns are a bit more broken. So yeah, shift work, particularly night shift, really does affect your dreams. Does your brain never sleep? It sounds like it's even busier at night than it is during the day. It, it does sleep a little bit, Anne-Marie. So when we go to sleep in each of these sleep episodes we have about 90 minutes long we go through four phases so we start off in a light sleep and then we have a, a, a deeper sleep and then a really profound sleep and in those second and third stages the brain is kind of switched off a bit 
But when you're dreaming, your brain is actually more active than it is when you're awake. So for two hours a night, your brain is very, very active. Mm -hmm. And it's not just doing that to make noise and amuse you. It's actually doing lots and lots of emotional processing and considering how you might be able to reach and achieve your aspirations in waking life. So interesting. Can I ask you a sort of general one? Like, uh, it's about me. I'm not going to go into specifics because I know you're worried about my dreams, Vinny. <laughs> yes, right? I'm worried about the detail of these dreams, Ian. I know, I'll try not. I'll certainly no. not name any names, right? <laughs> but I would dream a lot about people I work with. Um, yes. and strange things. So, like, I dreamt that I once was brushing one of our boss's ponytails. <laughs> <laughs> Is that and, person still a boss? Yeah, but they don't have the ponytail anymore. Okay, it narrows it, it down. It does. And then, <laughs> sorry, that really does narrow it down. And then the other one was I, I had a, uh, quite an, an erotic dream about uh, a person I used to work with um, in another part of the building who actually I didn't really like. <laughs> yeah, so, so what do you do about that? Yeah, so we said earlier on, anything to do with your, your head and the hair coming out of it, it's about your thoughts and ideas. So when you're brushing your colleague's ponytail, then what you're actually doing is getting his ideas aligned. You're straightening everything out. So you're, I'm sure you're brushing it, not using hair straighteners, but you're getting everything aligned. So he might come to you and say, well, I've got these ideas and these ideas, Anne-Marie, and you're going, right, we need to tighten this up and be more specific about it. So that's brushing the ponytail. You're just combing through the details. And then the one, the erotic dream, anytime you dream about someone else, you're actually dreaming about a part of your own character. Okay. The dream doesn't happen to you. You happen to the dream and you create all the characters in it. And erotic dreams are very, very rarely about anything erotic. Erotic dreams are about creativity and you becoming intimately aware of your creativity. So when you dream of someone who you're not particularly attracted to in an erotic manner, there's some quality that that person has that you realise you now have an opportunity to use create creatively. So it might be that they're really quick. It might be that they're really good at socialising. It might be that they're very good at making people feel comfortable or they very good at problem solving. Mm -hmm. And whatever quality that is, you're now becoming intimately aware that you can use that yourself and do something creative with it. There you go. That's, That's something to mull over. Yeah. Uh, a message here from Facebook. Um, and this one says, how can I anticipate events that happen when I'm asleep? For example... Uh, someone coming to the door in my dream i am aware of the knock and i can see and hear the knock is that like, like almost a type of awake and asleep at the same time yeah so it can be as paul was describing earlier that, that idea of that, that hypnagogic phase but also when we're asleep uh, and as Anne marie has been alluding to the, the brain doesn't entirely switch off and the two senses that are most awake when we're dreaming are smell and sound. So if the if the smell changes in the room some way, so if, if you have uh, you know, some potpourri or some lavender or any of those things, you will pick up on that and incorporate it into a dream. And if you hear sounds in a dream, so if you hear, uh, say, a bell outside or, say, a siren or something in the distance, you quite often weave that into your dream. Uh, because your eyes are closed, uh, sight doesn't really happen. Uh, but the main ones are sound and smell and you will actually weave them into your dream imagery that's incredible it just goes to show you as you said Amory, you're never completely switched off that often and where we're tight for time Ian this has come in before and you've addressed it before but a text asking about losing their front teeth mm -hmm. uh, they've had that dream on two different occasions now this is one of your is this number two number three losing yes. your teeth well done Vinny <laughs> apprentice dream wizard yeah so it's the second most common dream yeah, I was doing a bit of a job here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So what our teeth symbolise are power and confidence because we show our teeth on too many occasions. One when we're smiling, happy and confident. And the other one is when we're kind of snarling and asserting ourselves. So when you dream that your front teeth are falling out and again, going with the dream language, your front teeth are your incisors. And this is about being really decisive and confident, being incisive in the decisions you make in waking life. So if you dream your incisors, your front teeth are falling out, there's a situation in your waking life where you feel you have to make a quick decision, a powerful decision, but you're not feeling that confident with it. And again, like we said before, if you're feeling anxious in a dream, you have to step into uncertainty. So that's what you do in waking life. You make that decision and you see where it takes you. And then as you do that, it opens up new opportunities for you.
Do you want to do one one last one, Anne Marie? Yeah, I was also going to just ask: Is it true that if you eat cheese, that you're going to have no. nightmares? Is, is food, does food have anything to do with the type of dreams you have? No. Yeah, it does. So oh, it does. Uh, the, che- the cheese giving nightmares is like a complete myth. It's an old wives' oh. tale. The reality is that cheese is fatty, so it's quite hard to digest. So it gives your stomach a hard time when you're trying to sleep. So it gives you restless sleep, low quality sleep. So you keep waking up. And that tends to make you remember your dreams more, but it doesn't give you nightmares. But exactly the same thing happens if you have a big vindaloo. <laughs> <laughs> very, very briefly, Ian. Uh, uh, this one says, I dream that I am late for a flight. I've had this dream loads of times. Right. Um, and this person says, I have this dream all the time. So this dream is the 16th most common dream. And it's all about <laughs> over-preparing for something. So rather than just stepping into that uncertainty, and then improvising and being very successful there. It suggests that you spend all your time preparing and preparing and preparing, but never take the step to grasp the opportunity. Ian, it's been a pleasure, as always, to talk to you. Thank you so much. That's Ian Wallace, our dream psychologist. You can look him up online if you want to find out more about him. We'll see you again soon, Ian, hopefully. Yes, please, Vinny. really enjoyed that. Thanks so much. And thank, thank you, you Anne-Marie. Thank you.